Hey, do you have your own philosophy on what this world is all about? Are you one of those people who believes that you own the land you land on? Does this world only belong to the people on it? Well, guess what? Our guest today has a very strong philosophy about what this world really is. And she wants to know, do you see what she sees? My name is Vin DeQuino. Our next guest is a philosopher of sorts. Please meet Shanti Ureta. Shanti, always fascinated to have conversations with you because they always go in wonderful directions. Talk to me. Who is Shanti and what do you believe? First of all, thank you, Vinny, so much for having me How on here. Pleasure I am to have you so here. excited to be here. Who is Shanti? Yeah. I am a mother. Yes. I have two grown children. My daughter is 30. My son is 26. I am a wife. I've been married for 33 years. I am a Toastmaster. A Toastmaster. Ah, so you're learning to get yourself out there, project. And I say I'm a Toastmaster because it is one of the most important things that I learned in writing this book. Through Toastmasters, I learned where my voice was. And how to put yourself out there. How to there. put myself out there. How to be more comfortable, just like what we're doing right now, yep. in, in being in front of people. and being, A little nervous and about being here? A little nervous. Yeah, you look fine. You're going to be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit about this project. This is more than a project. And more importantly, how you got here. You and I have something in common. We stood on the edge of the valley. We saw darkness and then we saw light. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what I'm talking about. Eight years ago, I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, a blood cancer. And as one doctor told me, I had five years to live and it was going to be a painful death as my bones begin to break. Whoa. And for five weeks, I was under the assumption that that was what was going to happen. you had to break it to the children that you weren't going to, to be the around. Children, and I lived my life like this. Yep. And five weeks later, the second opinion determined it was a misdiagnosis. Holy cow. Yeah. Second chance. Second chance at life. And yep. in, in those five weeks, I... I went on survival mode. Yeah. I had I I knew that I really did know that I was going to fight this. Yeah. And after 5 weeks, I knew that I didn't have to fight it but life had changed. Yeah, it gives you a chance to see life in a different way. It gives you that second chance. Gives you and the second, second chance, chance a little different from the first one. Yes. What yes. do you now see that you didn't see before, Shanti? <clears throat> well, when you asked before who is Shanti, yeah. the most important part of me right now is I work very hard for animals because, and, and mostly the animals that, that we eat, mostly the animals that we perform science, science experiments on, and, and, the sci and, and the animals that we use as our entertainment because we all love our cats and dogs don't we we love our cats and dogs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people just drool over their their little puppies and little kids yeah we just did a show recently with uh, a dog that sat on the owner's lap the whole show never squeaked never said a word she was a princess truly a princess and that, that's what I do. I work for all animals, and that's what my life is about. So and you don't believe that we own the land we land on. It's everybody's land, including the animals who share it with us. My book is based on Albert Schweitzer's philosophy of a reverence for life. And a reverence for life talks about to be in awe of life. And we don't do that. He was a 1952 Nobel Peace Prize winner. Mm -hmm. 
And, and in his message to the world, he said, until he extends his circle of compassion to all living beings, man himself will not find peace. And that's what my book is based on. But it started eight years ago. And I didn't start as, as somebody who fights for animals. I, it, it started with that diagnosis. And in my, in my quest to survive, I was led to, by my, by my chiropractor, I was led to a plant-based diet. He told me, get off of meat, get off of dairy, eat organic, and juice your vegetables. So loving animals doesn't mean loving them on your plate with a side of carrots and potatoes. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. you don't eat animals. I used to. Before, before my diagnosis, I used to. I was uh, your standard American diet eater. I had, I was raised on, on, you know, your Puerto Rican menu there. <laughs> <laughs> A fairly new, now almost common term is vegan. Can you define that for me? What, what does vegan mean? Does it simply mean eating vegetables? Being vegan, which I am one, is a way of life. It's a lifestyle. It's somebody who lives their life doing the least amount of harm possible to any animal. And so we, I, I can't, nobody can really live totally, totally free of not doing any harm to animals. Because when you dig the ground, you're hurting the worms. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I do the least amount of harm possible to any animal. So I, I don't eat anything that comes from something that had a mother. Ah, I, okay. <laughs> if, That's if, an interesting if, way of putting it. If the milk came from my mother, well then I don't drink it. Really? Uh, the dairy cows Oh, are wow. So you're dairy-free, too. Dairy-free. Wow. Dairy, dairy cows are one of the... But do you feel that drinking milk is harmful as well, just because it came from an animal? I mean, I can understand not eating the cow, but I don't know about eating the milk or an egg. You don't eat eggs? No. Either? Wow. Nothing wow. that came from anything that had a mother. Wow. Dairy, in Colin Campbell's book, The China Study... He talks about animal protein, and we're all worried about where do you get your protein, where do you get your protein, yeah. and, and we've been fed this idea that we need animal protein. And Colin Campbell, in his, in his book, The China Study, he talks about how, how dairy, the protein in, in, in milk called casein, can turn off and on cancer. Mm. Wow. And, and, and vegetables can provide protein. I mean... Absolutely. Beans, Absolutely. they're very high protein. Beans, uh, there's a lot of uh, protein in, in broccoli and kale. Kale is my, my favorite. Oh, really? Kale is oh, my wow. favorite. And it's the, it's the highest nutritional density vegetable that there is. Wow, wow. Uh, so eight years ago, this certainly wasn't my, what, what I would say. Eight years ago, I would say, um, let's go to McDonald's <laughs> and have a chicken sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> and let's, yeah. let, let, let's go to uh, Catch Stories and have pizza. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there's a lot of people who believe that if you're raising animals to eat, it's not the same as going out and killing deer, for example. But it is, isn't it? Even though they're raised, I mean, even, that might even be more difficult to understand where calves when you talk about raising are you talking, talking about a about, small farm or are you talking yeah. about the 98 percent of the way that that animals are being raised these days which one are you talking about well you tell me i mean right now uh i'm aware that some animals are being raised simply for dinner i mean they're born into captivity mm -hmm. so that they can be raised and fattened mm -hmm. and fed to us, 
Ninety-eight <laughs> percent, I believe, either ninety-eight, wow. ninety-nine percent of the animals wow. that we and that chickens. We eat. Oh my God! When I think of how many chickens are in every grocery store in the United States, they were once living beings. And they were once living beings, and Albert Schweitzer talks about being in awe of of life, and when what we do to the animals. In factory farms, they're, they're called CAFOs, concentrated animal factory operations, and so, the animals that we eat, they never see the light of day. Wow! And they're they're confined slaves, born they're, into slavery. Yes. Simply for servicing human beings. Yes. Yes. And, and not necessarily even needs, wants. Wants. You, you don't need a steak. No. No. You want steak. You want a steak. And for your taste. And, yeah. and veganism isn't about taste. It's about compassion. Yeah, because, I mean, there's some vegan dishes that are wonderful, right? It's now, awesome. You, did you have to learn to be a vegan cook? You, you, you were not really a cook, period, I, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. I... I, ha I had to learn the hard way because it was a, a crash, crash course. And eight, eight years ago, definitely the, the food options that are available now are, were not available back then. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with stores. I mean, I, I've had several chefs on the show, and I was amazed. Uh, I had one chef on here with uh, chocolate chip cookies showing how some of the ingredients in those cookies weren't even available. Now there's health stores, and now mm -hmm. not even health stores. There used to be health stores. You'd have to go to a, a, a specialty store. Now, a number of the grocery stores have specialty sections where you could go there and mm -hmm. get things mm -hmm. uh, that are healthy and good for you. Mm -hmm. So it definitely has become easier because of the availability mm -hmm. of, of the food products that we can buy. But see, somebody listening to this right now may not may say, eh, "No, no, no, yeah, yeah that's that's yeah, not yeah, for I've me." Heard that that's, story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, what do most people say? Ah, it's too hard. Yeah. But in my book, it gives you the reason why. There, there. In in my book, I talk about solutions to so many of the world problems that we have. Yeah. It's not just what I, what 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 do I eat. It's yeah, let's really talk about that a little bit because being a vegan isn't just eating vegetables. No, it's not a philosophy. It's, it's a, a philosophy. way of life. Uh -huh. Talk to me about that way of life. What do vegans also believe outside of the diet? Well, I'm I'm a vegan that believes in and what I talk about in my book in in karma. Okay. I believe that what I do will come back to me. But I also have talked about societal karma. So there's this, there's this understanding in science and in religion that we are one, yes? Yes, yep. Okay. So, so take your body. If I slam my finger, I'm gonna, not only is this finger going to hurt, <laughs> but my whole body, I'm gonna be jumping up and down and screaming and crying in pain, right? Right. Well, if we are one, all the beings on this planet are one. When you hurt one, I you do, hurt them all. When, when I hurt one, I hurt them all. And so if we look at it that way, maybe we can start seeing, wow, maybe, maybe what's happening in our society is because of our doing. And maybe we don't have to feel so helpless about what the society is looking like. We are hurting the planet so badly. And, you know, you look outside and everything is beautiful. Isn't it a gorgeous day out today? Oh, no, it is. It's fascinating. Better than the snow. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of the world does not look like that. There are, there are places where we are hurting our, our earth. There are, there are pools of animal feces. The oceans, there are dead spots in the oceans where no ocean life will live. By the year wow. 2040, scientists say that the oceans will be devoid so of any... This is 2040? 2040. Wow. That's we'll, almost within our lifetime here. It'll be in my lifetime. Yeah. 
Hopefully mine too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, people hear that. I'm going to say some people hear that and go, oh, wow, that's too bad. But you know what? We can do something about it. Yeah. We can start looking at, at, at veganism Are we as getting a better? way of life. Are we getting better? Or is, is there still a long way to go? There's a yeah. long way to go. But I'm going to believe that vegan activists like myself yep. are putting this word out. And we're letting, we're, we're, we're raising an awareness, uh, raising a consciousness in yeah. our society so that we can do a little bit better. Speaking of raising the consciousness, this book, Dear World, See What I See. What do you see? Shanti, what do you see? And what does this book talk about? You've got a whole lot of pages here. Do they say the same thing over and over again, or what's the point? Eight years ago, I started on a journey. I went from a food and a health journey. And what I saw was, wow, what, what we eat really becomes who we are. Yeah. My name is Shanti. It means peace. And I really ah. do believe that I, I was given that gift. I went from a food and a health journey to an animal journey. I saw, I saw what is happening in this world. I see the, the, the atrocities, the horrendousness, the, the violence that we allow as a so society to the animals. And I want people to see that because it, people need to see that. I, Paul McCartney said that if slaughterhouses had glass walls, we would be we would all be vegetarian. Oh yeah, oh man, I worked for a short time when I was a kid in a slaughterhouse. That blew me away. That was that that was <laughs> a horrendous experience. It was like work like wor working in a concentration camp. We took these calves on our shoulders and piled them mm -hmm. on trucks. Mm -hmm. You know, these are lives. These are lives. And it does wake you up. It does. And, and, but then you go to sleep. Y you yeah, know, you don't then, see it. And then you go the next the day you go and eat veal parmesan. You go to yeah, the store and you. you see all this nicely packaged food. And you don't really connect that, wow, that was a living being at some point. And yeah. somebody had to kill that for me at some point. But you're basically eating corpses. Yes. Yes. I know. It's, it's yes, a rough way are. to put it. Yes, but it's I could say other fact. things, but I'll be nice. <laughs> <laughs> So, I went from the, the the animal to a planet journey. Okay, what does that mean? What is happening to our planet? We're yeah. taking the lungs away so that we can allow for grazing of animals. We are destroying our waters. We're destroying our air. Yeah. The United S the, the UN report in 2006, Livestock's Long Shadow, says that the animal agriculture does more damage for gl greenhouse gases than all the transportation, all the buses, all the cars, all the, all the planes, all the trains, wow. all the transportation combined. Yeah, I mean, think about it. There very possibly can be a day when you can't go outside the way we are now without some kind of breathing apparatus look at the sun we can't go and be sun worshipers without the risk of getting cancer we have to be careful about things we eat things we breathe uh things we touch with germs and it's becoming a dangerous world just to wake up and go back to sleep without endangering yourself in some way. It's a dangerous world. And a lot of it is what we've caused. What we've caused. And if we see what we are causing, if we see that connection, then, then, then we can change it. So your first step isn't to change the world. It's to make the world aware. <laughs> it's to make the world aware. So and, that's and what this book is about. 
to ask people to look at what they can do. You know, we look outside and we, and, and we think about, oh, well, let's pray for peace, let's pray for peace. All these people are doing all these things While out you're there. sitting there eating a cow. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but there are things that you can do. You can, e each, each person can put out less violence. We all can do something. And, yeah. and if we all do it together, it would be easier. And it all begins here. It all begins you know, here. You don't have to change the world. One of my favorite saying is, we can change the world a child at a time. Just one person at a time. And you don't have to worry about saving the whole world today. Save one. So at least it begins. First and the me. first one is first yourself. Me. First you you change need yourself. to change yourself. Yes. And, and, and then know, begin changing the world. And know that you can do it because it is possible. I have never eaten so wonderfully than I do now. My daughter yeah. went to Natural Gourmet Institute in the city, and she is the chef in the house. Yep. It's like Michael uh, so Jackson who said, looking at the man in the mirror, <laughs> begin with the man in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's where be change, the change really begins. Gandhi said, be the change that you want to be see in this change. world. So if you want peace, well then you have to be peace. You have we to create have to be peace. peace. Yeah. But it, isn't it difficult to be a person of peace in a world of war? We are a world at war. Everything I see on the news, everything I see every day is violence. There's so much violence in this world. And after a while, doesn't it kind of wear us down? If each person is that one little stone and makes that ripple of peace. Pretty soon all those stones all make a wall those stones and the will wall be. will wall out violence. And wall in peace makes sense. That's that's what I have to believe. That's what I have to. That's how I have to live. So Shanti, when I'm done reading this book, what can I say to make you say, "Oh, Vinny, you got it. That's it, man. That's <laughs> what I'm trying to say." <laughs> ah, what do I want you? Yeah. To what do you want believe? me to come out of this book with, for you to say, "Oh, he got it." An awareness. It an starts awareness. with an awareness. Starts with the aw the awareness, the consciousness that what you do affects the world. What you do affects the world. And believe that you can be that change for yep. yourself. It's difficult if you're that one person doing it all by yourself. Yes, it is. But if you have people around you, you get your families. Feed your children. Feed your children healthy. The the the, the yeah. outrageous and things that teach your be children how to eat and take care of themselves, exactly. so that they'll take care of their children. Exactly. And it is a cycle. And mm -hmm. and we f we do find that we are our mothers and fathers. And it's very difficult to unteach. Mm -hmm. I find I, I taught for 35 years. One of the things I discovered was to unteach is more difficult than to teach because some people <coughs> have seen it and seen it and lived it so often that they believe that it is the truth. And sometimes the truths that we're handed are not very true at all, are they? Somebody said to me the other day, Oh, I have diabetes. It's 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 hereditary in my family. And I says, I you know what? It's possible that the only thing that her that was hereditary was your lifestyle. Hmm. And you know, if if you don't want to, you know, be that person to save the world and and be be peace, save yourself. Save yourself. <laughs> save yourself. So be that's basically what you're saying here is begin with yourself. Begin with yourself. If your health is at risk begin with yourself and then everybody else yep. benefits and the it certainly would be benefit. a lot easier to focus on you first yes yes instead of trying to save the whole world yes because when you start to do that you begin to say it can't happen right too difficult of a job i so have you're too saying, many things okay, on my plate to do yeah so bite off what you can chew exactly and that is <laughs> to begin with you 
and and to try to make changes in your own life and when you do that other people will see you and begin to copy a lot of your beliefs and lifestyles mm -hmm. so you've taken it a step further this book takes it a step further and this book is going to be available to readers and again Shanti isn't trying to change the world she's trying to change you she's trying to get you to see life in a more wholesome way to think about how what you do affects others yes pretty much Shanti any final words that you would like to share with the audience what would you like to say to them to make it stick and why do they need to read your book I want everybody to read my book I've written it so that it is in simple language I've written it so that a fourth grader could read it but it has a lot of meaning to everybody and just take one thing at a time. I give recipes. The, the recipes that I started. There are recipes there are in recipes this book recipes that as well. I started oh, with. Great. Um, back when I said, oh, what am I going to eat? There's, there are recipes that I, that I include. Just start. Just so, one So is it like quitting day. smoking? You know, uh, go from a pack a day to half a pack a day to one? Or are you saying, just stop eating meat? Whatever, whatever you want. Whatever it takes. Whatever, whatever you need to do. Do it in your own pace. Do it at your own pace. It. But do it for for yourself, for your for your health. You and for the world. Do it for your health. Do it for the animals. Do it for the world. Do well, it for the for you our heard survival. It. And you're hearing Shanti, and what she's saying to you is, if you want to change the world, begin with the most important person in your life, you you and you have to begin changing who you are you have to become conscious of the world you live in conscious of the fact that you're not here alone there's other people on this planet with you other living things and just because they don't have two arms and two legs doesn't make them any less of a living being yes Shanti absolutely so read this book read it now begin changing your life and stay tuned to this show for a whole lot more of wonderful information and wonderful authors just like Shanti. Shanti, what a, a pleasure, pleasure to have you here. You have been an awakening. Uh, hopefully, people out there will listen to your word, will begin to make changes that are necessary for a better world.